Um, they asked me to do this certificate so that I can integrate technology in my teaching. Even though our classes uh, at the University of Westminster is mainly like the face-to-face -face class, they started to shift more towards uh, the technology. They asked us to do flip classroom to create the video. And in that certificate that I took, they, um, one of the things that I had to do is I had to create the wikis. You know, wiki, right? Uh, the kind of like online resources that I, we, we can share with other people in the organization to, to show them that here is what we found, here is what we did. What I did was I analyzed the uh, videos of uh, all the MOOC courses that I attended just to find out like what is it that other instructors do to encourage people to think at the higher level in their courses. And with that, I want you to pause and think for a second. What, are, or what were some of the video clips, or maybe just one video clip, that you just watched recently, and you thought that you learned something new, some insightful information from that video, and that video kept you watching until the end? What were some of the elements in that video that made you feel that it captured my attention? And then I learned something new about it as well. Okay. You have the answer in your mind now? You should have some. If you have some, I want you to spend 30 seconds turn around and maybe share your answer with the person who sits behind you or next to you. Could you do me a favor real quick and then I will ask you to share some of the thoughts with me and I will see whether or not it matches with what I have analyzed in the MOOC courses that I, I looked at in particular. Could you do me a favor real quick? Talk about the videos that you watched and you found very interesting, very insightful and you learned new information from that video in particular. You can speak in Thai or in, in English as you wish. Let me also emphasize that it should be educational video, not a kind of like a promotional video. Thirty seconds. We have to interrupt you now because uh, otherwise I'm going to run out of time towards the end. Let me ask you to share some of the thoughts. Think of the videos that you just discussed with uh, people who sit around you or next to you. What are some of the elements in those videos that really capture your attention and teach you some new information that you feel, wow, I learned something new. Can I ask someone to share? Yes, David? Why do you like TED Talk? What are the elements in the, the TED Talk? Is, I think that I feel like they're sharing rather than teaching. Sharing, that's the key word. All right, can I hear from other people in the room? <laughs> oh, it's your own lecture, okay. Uh, besides sharing instead of like teaching, what are other elements that you just discussed with people who sit around you or next to you and you discussed? We discussed showing. So showing. You can see it rather than be explained, you can see it visualized. Demonstration, sharing, demonstration, those are the two keywords already. Any other keywords? Yes, sir. Uh, 
for, can you explain a little yeah, more? Yes, I just saw it on YouTube. I just see how many people just watch it already. So I can just borrow this. It's a many feeling, feelings keep watching. So I just borrow this. Oh, interesting. That's a good observation. Yeah. relevant to the people themselves, right? So you relate, you share the information that is quite relevant to them. Can I hear one more thoughts from the back of the room? Maybe this side or that side? What are some of the... Yes? The length of the video. Like, I watched it three minutes, half a day, some being very short. Summarize, right? Clear and short summary. Any thoughts from this side? Okay. But what about production? That makes you feel interested. Maybe we have watched a message and we got some descriptive words that puts the customers on the viewer and we just share that video to the student or categories and put the customers. Hook. That's that is exactly one of the words that I'm gonna say in, in, in my presentation in the next few slides. Okay, so with that, we have quite a few good words here to summarize the kind of like video that could bring up the learning of the viewers from just trying to memorize and not even memorize, right? Just kind of like you'd be lucky if they watch you until the end of the video, right? Okay, so with that, um, uh, with all the answers that you have right now, think of the video that you want to produce in the near future or the video that you have already produced as well in your online teaching and learning. Now, I'm going to share with you the three types of video, instructional videos that I have compiled from watching all the MOOC courses and um, these three types of videos, all of them, if you add with the instructional pedagogical kind of like theory, you can definitely bring up the level of engagement of the viewers to a more higher order learning as well. Can you imagine, can you guess what is the first type of video that is most commonly used in an online learning course? Lecture. lecture, teaching the concept. I would call that teaching a concept. I try to avoid the term lecture because otherwise it will kind of like create the same mindset all the time that we are lecturing, we are not sharing as you said, right? TED Talk is more sharing. But when we lecture, it's sort of like we are here, up here, and then the students, the viewers are down there just listening to our lecture, okay? But if we start sharing, uh, viewer who feel more comfortable watching us. And there are a lot uh, of instructional theories that talk about good lecturing style that we can apply into video creation, okay? And make our video more engaging. The first one that I would like to highlight is the uh, article by Collins in 2014 from uh, Queensland in Australia. Okay, I want to, since I don't have much time to go through everything, I just want to highlight that, you know, there are some parts in here that I want to, oops, sorry, I'm going to go back, okay, and where's the lighting, the pointer, okay, is there a pointer here? Okay, don't climb it up. Mind. That never mind. Don't worry. Okay, I just want you to pay attention to kind of like the, the kind of like the center of the slide. There are some 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 strategies for message structuring in the video that you can think of when you design the content of your lecture video lecture video sharing. Okay, um, video content. Sometimes you might just post the question first, ask students to predict what the outcome would be like. Okay, and in that case, students will start thinking more. And you don't even have to reveal the answer. What, what was or what is the correct prediction in the end, in the video? Leave that for future videos so that the students start feeling that 
I, I'm dying to watch the second part of the video. And as they watch, they try to make sense of the theory, um, kind of like that, that, that you talk about in the middle of the video as well. Let me give you an example here. I don't know if you are from my, uh, from the same discipline because I'm from marketing communications, from communication discipline. There was uh, one time and I have to teach the theory of uh, organization and how organization adapt to the external environment and we call that systems theory. If that's too basic for you, I apologize. Uh, but uh, just to make sure that we are on the same page here. At the beginning in, in that video that I created, I used uh, the metaphor like, you know, what do you do when the weather outside is cold? What do you do when the weather outside is hot? And your body have to, will have to adjust to the, the weather, right? What do you do? What kind of clothes are you going to wear? And ask students to predict this metaphor that I'm going to share. How are they similar or different from the system theory? Then I talk about system theory is different elements of system theory. And at the end of the video lecture, I asked the students, pause and think for a second, like how was the metaphor that I mentioned at the beginning of the video? It's similar to the system theory that I just mentioned here. I didn't give them the answer in the video lecture. I told them that, come to my classroom because that's the flipped classroom kind of like video. It's not for the MOOC in particular. So the students will have to come and discuss that question in class, in particular. That is kind of like one of the first strategy that I got from this. Another article that I strongly recommend, if you want to create higher order learning video uh, in the instructional style, is this article by Kumi in 2015. If you do Google search, the article should come up. It's uh, an open access as well. Kumi talks about so many uh, moves, so many structures uh, that you could use in your online video. Number one, right away, is the hook, right? The descriptive words that you can use to get the attention of the viewers right away, okay? Little tiny things like that could arouse the interest of the audience or the viewers right away. But can you imagine what is the most common opening scene in the video? What, was, what is the common thing or things that the lecturers usually say in the video, online video, when they give a lecture? Good morning, good afternoon, hello. Today our topic is... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what does that mean to the viewers? Same old, same old, usual, routine, you know, business. That turned that span of attention off immediately. On the other hand, if you think of the TED Talk, what is the opening move of the good TED Talk speakers? Imagine yourself in this situation. They start by telling stories, and that is the hook, right? Capturing the attention of the viewers first. Okay? You can do, use all the basic public speaking skills that you have learned. Telling stories, start with the quotes and all those things. However, one suggestion I would make as well is when you spend too much time with the hook, the length of the video will be increased, will expand as well, right? So you will see that for a short video, sometimes the immediate hook the kind of like the punch will be just top three strategies to do your homework right. Okay, top three strategies. It summarizes the, the content right away for the audience. And then that content is something that students or viewers need to know immediately as well. If I say like top three strategies to get rid of the wrinkles on your face. A lot of female, my sexist, comment a lot of people who just like yeah i want to watch that okay and i know that it's going to be three elements here right and with that i want to highlight on this uh, number three which is the cognitive engagement that is the main thing that i want to emphasize not many people did this not many people post questions not many people encourage prediction and not many people establish relevance to personal life. 
to engage higher order thinking as they watch the video clip, uh, as the viewers watch the video clip of your lecture as well. So with that, pause and think about, see, I'm posing question, posing reflection again, right? Pause and think about the video lecture that you have created. Did you pose any kind of like questions for people to reflect, to relate to own practices here? Okay, and with that, um, actually I have a short video that summarizes the five R of the millennials, but I will skip that because the, the, the computer and everything is not quite uh, supportive for that. But you can go back and kind of like take a look at the, or maybe search on YouTube. There's a study by Price, who is the uh, educational psychologist, who found that there are five R's for engaging the millennials, and that video summarizes the five R. The point of me, in, uh, the point of including that video is to show this instructional strategy uh, in the instructional video that I've just mentioned to you. That video kind of like demonstrated this issue quite well, and those five R included all these R's. All right, I'm not going to go through this for you, uh, but. When you have a chance, go back and to YouTube and then search this video by yourself, the five R's for the millennials to learn something, okay? It's quite a, a good one, I think. Clear, short, just two minutes, and you learn new information, easy to remember as well, for example. The second type of the video that is most commonly used to engage the viewers is the video interviewing experts or the panel. Interviewing is the first type. The most common mistakes that video lecture in the MOOC made when they created the interview scene is they scripted. They scripted the interviews and make the interviews sound not so authentic at all. Good afternoon, Howard. Today I'm going to interview you and then ask you, so what is the topic of today? If you don't know the topic, why are you interviewing that person here on this video, right? I saw a lot of that kind of interviewing uh, video uh, in the MOOC course, and I just think that to make the video uh, lecture more engaging, the video has to be very authentic, not too scripted, and then use the kind of like engagement strategies from the previous slide that I mentioned to you. The panel is when you interview many people, have a kind of like a group of people to discuss some issue. This is the kind of like most dangerous type of video that I found. Because the more people, the longer the video, and people tend to lose engagement quite easily. So if you want to use the panel, you can use it, but uh, you have to edit it and keep it like under seven minutes. Now, do you know, what reach, uh, psychological research says about the span of concentration? What is the shortest span of concentration that people in the younger generation, the millennial, has these days? Hmm? Three, four minutes? Short, very short. You would say three, four minutes, right? Surprisingly, last night I Google searched. Eight seconds. <laughs> Eight seconds. I'm just like, oh boy. Seriously. And if you use this kind of long, lengthy interview, you fall into the trap of doing that. Now, the last type of video that I find quite interesting and quite unique is the type of video that I would call video that guides students to the assignment. Okay, stay tuned. In the next video, We'll show you how to work on this assignment, okay? And with that, the students will kind of like feel that, yes, this is a must, I have to do it. And then you provide the tips of doing the assignment. There's another literature that I wrote on my wikis, but I cannot share with you because that is the internal wikis for my university. The concept is called assessment literacy. You have to educate the students about the assignment, the assessment that uh, you ask them to do. And this kind of video will do just that. And I also include this type of video, uh, the video that provides feedback. I enrolled in the course 
uh, by the University of New South Wales in the in Australia, and they did this quite interesting video. And uh, they did not create this video in advance. Uh, prior to that video, they asked students to provide some comments, some suggestions, uh, you know, through the discussion boards and everything. All right, and then they created this Q and A video. The instructors will come and answer that question and talk to the viewers by referring to the person who asked the question uh, specifically. And this kind of video makes people who ask the question feel that mm -hmm. the instructor is not in the screen. The instructor is there to really answer our question. And that kind of like brings up the higher order learning as well. To recap or to conclude my presentation here, today I share with you three types of videos. The first one is the instructional, direct instructional video that you can use so many strategies that I showed in the slides to encourage higher order thinking. And those strategies can be applied to the other two types of videos as well, which is the interview and then the video that provides feedback. Instructional video could pose a constraint to us because it's the new platform that we are not familiar with, at least for me. And then it doesn't allow for immediate feedback from the students as well. Less interactive in that sense, but with the greater access for students because they can watch anywhere, everywhere, anytime, we can use some of these strategies to encourage them to engage in a higher order mm -hmm. learning. And with that, we can maximize our online teaching strategies here. Thank you so much for your time, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to entertain any. We have some questions, because I know we've all experienced uh, the challenges and some success in doing online videos, but we have to do it right. I think that's kind of what you were to learn from what others have done. Any comments or questions? Yeah, just uh, just a uh, uh, compliment to you that uh, your lecture today let me me think a lot about my next video production. That's it. Yeah, very great uh, work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Same for me. Do you Are there some other questions? Okay. Well. Thank you, and thank everyone for coming to our session today. I hope everything went well for you at the conference today, and we'll see everyone a little bit later. Okay, thank you.